We are today with Coach Price from Kansas University. Um, Coach Price, thanks for joining us. First question, um, what advice do you give high school ball players looking to play at Kansas University? Well, I think first off, David, it starts in the classroom. In order to play it at the BCS level, you know, the schools have really good academic traditions. Kids really need to focus on, on the academic side and not only just the baseball part of the equation. And you know, I think they need to meet with their counselor. They've, NCA has just upped the number of required core classes that are required to get into a Division One institution, starting with next year's junior class. So I think it's going to be important that kids know exactly what type of classes they have to take, what their GPA needs to be, how to take the ACT or the ACT, how to register for the clearinghouse. I think those things are all crucial in the process. And I think it starts there. And then obviously after you get it done academically, you've got to get yourself the opportunity to continue to develop your skill set and, then, and be able to find an institution that matches up with your individual abilities. What's a few, way that, a few ways that high school players can stand out to you when you're in, during the recruiting process? Well, I think first off, video is one of the greatest um, recruiting tools that's available to young men today. Uh, I would encourage every student athlete to find a way to get videotaped. If they play shortstop, fielding ground balls, turning pivots, uh, running home to first base, going first to third, swinging the bat on the field, and then, uh, and then if they could put clips of live game videos together too. And, and when I'm talking about that, David, I, the worst thing a kid can do is, is send some coach a 15 minute video, okay? I mean, I get over 4,000 letters a year and emails a year from kids that are interested in playing at Kansas. And if we're gonna take the time to evaluate their abilities, it needs to be short and it needs to be quick and it needs to be professionally done so that when we sit down on that computer, our assistants can go through that as quick as possible. We have an evaluation form that our players, that our coaches sit down and grade out each player. It, it, it tries to evaluate where we think their skill set is and what level that they think they can play. And uh, the more professional that video can be done, the better opportunity a young man has to showcase in their skill set. What's the hardest adjustment for freshmen coming into college baseball and how can they make that transition better? Oh, there's no doubt. It's the speed of the game. I mean, uh, you know, there's 310 Division I baseball programs in America. There's three different levels within Division I. You've got the BCS Power Conferences where the biggest, strongest, fastest, best players play at. And then, then you've got your mid-majors where kids can go in and have an opportunity to develop in their four years there and be able to play by the time they're a junior and senior. And then you've got your low-level Division I programs where the skill set isn't near as high in order it takes to play at those institutions as it does probably the first 150 schools in the country. So to me, David, that's where the key is. I, I think the hardest thing for student athletes to evaluate is where do my skill set and my academic preparation, what's the most appropriate level for me to pursue? What's the biggest separator between the good and great ball players that you've been able to coach at over the years in college ball? Well, I think obviously, you know, when you talk about the tools it takes to play the game, the ability to hit, run, field, throw, and hit with power, those things are all measurable. Uh, at the same time, you see guys that are really good players that may have average skill sets but play better than guys that have great tools because those kids know how to play the game. They know how to do the little things within the game that it takes to be successful. It starts playing outstanding defense. It's being an outstanding base runner. It's being able to handle the bat. It's being able to put the ball and play with two strikes. It's not making middle errors on the defensive side of the ball. Those are the kids that we're all looking for. All of us that are in the top 50 programs in the country, we're looking for not only kids with talent, we want kids that know how to play and have a passion to play the game. What's one thing about college baseball that you feel high school players just don't understand until they actually get on campus? Well, I think first off, they don't understand the rigors it takes to be in a student athlete division one level. I'll give you in a classic example. This is a typical day for a student athlete at the University of Kansas. We lift Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday with our strength coach in our weight room. Those workouts are from 6.30 to 7.30 every morning and four days a week. They go take their classes. Most of our kids have 15 units. Uh, sometime during the day when they have a one hour break three times a week, they're gonna go meet with our position coach that they play. So if they're a pitcher, they're going with the pitching coach, infielder going with the infielders, outfielders going with the outfield coach, and then obviously with our hitting coach. But three times a, day, a week for the first four weeks of school, they're gonna go spend individual instruction time getting prepared for the Florida Steam practice. 
Then they're going to go to, to conditioning on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from, from uh, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And when you think I can't control your life more than that, then they've got study hall from 7 to 9 o'clock. So they've got to put their required number of hours in along with their tutor sessions during the week. And at KU, our first month of the season is basically what I just formatted for you. Then the NCA gives you 45 days to have a 27 practices. So our players are going to their normal three, three and a half hour a day practices like you would in the spring. They still have the weight room responsibilities. They still have the academic responsibility. And they still have the tutors and study halls at night. So as you can tell, it's a, it's a really, really demanding schedule for a student athlete at the Division One level. Great. And final question, uh, what's one piece of advice you'd give high school ball players looking to take their game to the next level? Well, I think number one is is I think you got to play. I, I think the more you play this game, the better you get at it. And the hardest thing about our game, the toughest thing in all of sports to do is hit a baseball. If you hit 300, you make $3 million a year, you fail 70% of the time. You make 30% of your free throws, you won't even play on your high school team. You know, So I think the amount of time that you have to spend developing your skill sets is off the charts. We tell our players, in addition to the time that you spend on the field, we have three indoor cages, we have five outdoor cages. We expect our players one hour a day on their own. One hour a day on their, with their hitting partner, developing their, their swing, working on their mechanics, uh, trying to improve every single day. Because those are the guys that play the next level, the ones that continue to get better, not through high school, but also through college as well. That's great. Thanks a lot for your time. It's my pleasure, David. It's, 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 it's